You're welcome back. Now you're still on to News Hub and uh, we just uh, ended a segment where we talked about the front pages of the newspapers and I'd just like me to remind you also that uh, on uh, open day that will be coming in uh, later uh, today, this, later this morning, you have opportunity also to call in and react to certain issues. But first, before we go into that particular segment, this morning we'll be taking a look at uh, the leaked NCERS panel reports, the various controversies therein, the leaked NCERS uh, panel reports and the controversies. I have uh, very distinguished uh, Nigerians that will be joining me this morning to, to share their thoughts with us on the, what they feel about these reports, the leaked one, and also the, the various controversies that are coming in. Uh, let me start, let me say charity begins abroad. Let me start from outside my studio in here and introduce my first uh, guest. He, uh, she is uh, Ayo Obe. Ayobe is joining us uh, via uh, Zoom. She is a legal practitioner. She will be throwing light on uh, several issues about this, uh, the answers, the panel report, and the, the controversies, uh, giving us the legal perspectives of, of some of these things. Nice to have you join us, uh, Ayobe. Uh, good morning, Eshemo. Am I getting it right? Very well, Eshemo. Greetings from Madrid, by the way. <laughs> Eshemo. No. Yes, 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 yes. Um, then also, I have joining me also. Oh, okay. Then I have my guests here in the studio. Uh, he is uh, Victor Anilaju. Victor Anilaju. Yes. Uh -huh. He is a politician, a young politician, and. Uh, uh, he said he wants to be the uh, Nigeria's uh, 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 president. So but we're not talking about that now. We're just talking about the answers. Maybe there will be opportunity later on to talk about all those things. We're talking about maybe the CEO will be able to talk about all that. But now it's about the next year. Nice to have you join us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Siva Bed, for having me. Thank you, Shumomo. Thank you, Nigerians, for listening. Stay tuned and hear what's going to happen. Uh, now, it's quite nice to have young people uh, coming into the, uh, throwing themselves into the public uh, space and Nigerians will ultimately decide. And uh, that is what we'll be taking a look at. Now, let me start quickly with uh, IOB. Uh, you, the, the Lagos state is the, the state that has just submitted uh, its panel reports to uh, the executive. And just after then, uh, some people say it was a leaked report that is not the authentic, and several people are beginning to pick holes with that report. And uh, let me share your, let me just uh, just share your thoughts with us. What do you feel about this whole stuff, the report that was submitted and the leaked one? Well, um, SJ Momo, I have to say that um, the report, the version that I read, is is the leaked version. It's the one that's been circulating. But the version that I read is um, so full of errors, repetitions, typographical, grammatical mistakes, and it was not signed. So while I am not going to say that it doesn't substantially reflect the final report, I wouldn't be surprised at all to learn that the final version handed to the governor is different, simply because all those errors are, are untidy. I mean, for example, one of the... Um, a lot, a lot that I read was not so much the um, findings and recommendations of the panel, but the, all the evidence. The witness, um, Sarah Ibrahim, they report her as saying, it's not like there was an uncompleted building. When in fact, her evidence was that she took shelter or shield in an uncompleted building. Um, you've got the forensic expert saying that he, he was aware that the curfew was declared on the 19th of October, things like that. And again, I should also say that a lot has been made of the fact that Nathaniel Solomon, who is, um, you know, a lot to be made of the fact that he is listed as number 46 on the list of Lekito Gate casualties but that he was alive and talking about his brother's death. But he's actually on the list of petitioners in the panel's report, uh, in Petition 11, as a representative of the deceased. 
um, or the deceased, his brother, Abuta Solomon. So I think those kinds of um, carelessnesses, which were probably in one version that was possibly circulated to members of the panel, has been, um, is, is what we have seen. And that there should undoubtedly have been some, some corrections and, and just general tidying up in the version that, that got to the got to the governor. So it's with those caveats. And of course, I also have to say that those of us who are looking at the report, unless we were following the proceedings directly all the time, we will see that there are a lot of um, video, video evidence referred to. And um, we have not seen those videos. There are video clips, there are flash drives and, and all sorts of things. We, we haven't seen those. So our, 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 um, our assessment of, the, of what the panel has said and recommended is probably, um, is, is, is colored by the fact that we don't have everything okay. before it's, But I will say um, that the thing, yeah, I'm going to say that the thing that really stood out for me in all the evidence is the evidence of the Lagos State Chief Pathologist. And he gave a lot of evidence. And fortunately, one of the counsel who was cross-examining him asked him to list the 99 corpses that he did um, autopsies or that his department did autopsies on. And um, so that you have the opportunity to see. And I think that what, what really shocks me in that is that the Lagos State Environmental Health Monitoring Unit, you know, I mean, I don't know if you remember, there was a time when Lagos State used to be described as the dirtiest city in Lagos. And one of the reasons was that there were always dead bodies lying around and people would be dodging and saying, no, it's not my responsibility. So this SEMU, as they called it, collected 23 bodies lying around all over Lagos and four of them had gunshot wounds. So when you bear in mind the allegation by the, um, by the protesters that the army took the bodies away, uh, when you hear that the army took and you uh, uh, so I, compare I, I, that with the fact okay. that these bodies um, sorry okay I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you on your line of thoughts uh, let me just uh, interact with uh, my guest here in the studio Victor you've also got, I guess you've read the, the leaked panel report and you must have also heard about certain uh, controversies about it now just share your thoughts with us about this uh, the report and the controversies coming up <clears throat> Okay, um, thank you for that. The truth about it is that um, the APC-led government will never give us a credible report. We never persecute the people that killed the young Nigerians at the Lekki Togate. The APC-led government will never allow the panel to work by themselves. So whatever a report that comes out, let me tell you, they are still going to rubbish it. Now, 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 Victor, let me just quickly ask you this. When you say the APC government, are you saying that the panel headed by the retired uh, uh, justice uh, was not independent in their proceedings? It was being appointed by the APC-led government. So, so you, the you, credibility you, of the panel, you're it, doubting the credibility. It, I, look at... The report, the report itself speaks for itself that, see, it's like reporting an incident and creating loopholes where it is evident that they are still trying to cover up everything that happened at the Lekki Togate. But you know the truth. The APC-led government, they are loser. They are going to no, lose no, no. Lagos State. They are going to lose... No presidency now because now, of this end now, saga. now let's let, let's let's come back to this report uh, uh, yeah you're a politician there are tendencies that we want to put politics no 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 see sir yeah. so, no. no no take that away I'm not playing I'm telling you the truth now okay let me just put this to you okay. that in this same on this same panel you mm. have 
uh, uh, credible uh, human rights activists. Now, so you're also saying that these people uh, were not transparent because they had somebody that was teleguiding them, it so is, whatever it, came out. It was not a panel of one man uh, or one woman. It was a panel of group of persons. Now look at the, the reports. The reports have not been out. It has been leaked. And they are already loopholes. It was intentional for there to be loopholes. Mm. See, my brother, I didn't come here because of politics. Mm. I came here because of the life of young Nigerians. Mm. I'm not here in this studio because I want to talk about APC. Mm. No, I'm here in this studio to let the citizens know the truth. And the truth is, we do not expect the APC-led government to tell us the truth of what happened at the Lekki Togate. You, you, you will never get the, the, the truth from them mm. because they are the perpetrator of that evil, of that massacre that took place at Lekki Togate. Mm. How can you expect somebody that committed a crime to report himself or herself? It's not done so. The only thing we can do in this country is to get the APC-led government out of Lagos State, out of Nigeria. And the next uh, a party that will take over, we handle this issue judiciously. But let me tell you the truth. If we leave it in the table of the APC-led government, they are not going to come up with anything. They will keep playing us to and fro. Okay. Keep, keep playing us. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm coming back to you uh, on your line of thoughts. Uh, I was about asking uh, uh, that the various uh, controversies, loopholes that you have alluded to, he has also talked about uh, uh, some of those uh, uh, loopholes. Uh, would you say that uh, it's like a fifth column is working from the, uh, uh, from the very beginning to make sure that whatever comes out uh, it's not credible, or do you think that uh, some individuals that were even part of this uh, panel that investigated this whole stop were not being sincere to leak a, re a report, a perceived report that has loopholes? Chairman, I was reading the report objectively. I was not reading it looking for a gotcha, there's a mistake here, or this. So I, I really don't want to go into I can't speculate. I don't know how the report came out. And what I was dealing with was the copy that is in circulation. I was talking about the number of bodies that have been found all over Lagos. That should surprise us, that should alarm us. Equally, we should be alarmed at the fact that of the bodies that were, that, um, that um, autopsies were performed on, the Ikoi prisons deposited 20 bodies and most of them had gunshot wounds on them. Now, the panel said that it decided that these could have come from Lekki Tollgate, but unfortunately, no witness from the Ikoi Correctional Center was called to say that, but we know that there was some disturbance at Ikoi Correctional Center the day after, um, or two days after the um, incident at Lekki Tollgate. And um, the idea that in that disturbance, 20, yeah, things that the panel said for offences committed during the um, during the NSARS. Well, I, I would say after the NSARS um, uh, protest, and um, so they have not been tried. And although the panel has recommended that those are to be tried, that should should be tried, but they should be released on bail. And so people inside the prison are not, most of them are not convicted people. It could be anybody. And so the idea that in that disturbance, 20 people could have been shot and died as a result of their wounds, that again is alarming. And we should, should understand that the context in which we are considering this, yes, we are talking about Lekki Tollgate and unarmed protesters the panel used somewhat purple prose unarmed defenseless protesters and so on but um even all around lagos those number of bodies so many of them with fun shoppings it, 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 it's alarming and then there are also the ones that were deposited by the police and the police may also be in a situation of finding bodies and taking them to mortuaries so i think that 
that in itself requires interrogation. And as I said, it tends to support the allegation that the army just carried the bodies away. Now, we know that the panel went to the what they thought was a mortuary at Awulawa Road, and they didn't find anything. But um, when you have unknown and unnamed bodies, then that's a problem. I think also that um, one of the things that concerned me is this list of names, because the pathologist, the chief, chief pathologist, was very clear that no DNA um, testing had been done. So it's impossible to understand from the leaked report how the panel arrived at the names of people who they said um, were, were to be compensated for, for deceased persons. Um, because I, I did on the few people who are named in the pathologist 99 people, none of them, none of the names coincides. So it's, um, it, it's difficult to see, and we don't have all the reasoning of the panel. I mean, in some cases, the panel was clear about why it does not accept certain evidence. For example, the police saying, and we, anybody would find that incredible, or the police saying, oh, we didn't know what was happening, nobody complained to us, and the panel looking at the police um, record of arms and ammunition that was taken out, which showed clearly that it was no more than the usual amount and, and so on. So that they did, in some instances, you can see their reasoning and what they were, um, you know, what was going on in their mind as they reached their conclusions. And of course, you had the, the, the attempt by the witness from the army to obfuscate what happened before the okay, Barista, 20th of August. Barista, but let me just come in here. Now, you've identified some uh, very, very uh, uh, critical uh, points. Now, uh, uh, this report has been submitted to uh, the, the governor. And as of today, uh, we are not sure if it's the authentic report or not. Now, but uh, also, I think a member of the panel came out and was uh, saying that uh, the government should not uh, tamper with what was submitted. Now, if when the white paper of the government comes out and the white paper seemed to be at variance with what was leaked, uh, where would this place us? Now, as a lawyer, legally speaking, where would this place us? We don't know if it's an authentic one we have now, but people have picked holes with it, and the government is going to come out with a white paper. Now, where will it place uh, us in this whole game of finding, uh, getting to the root of the matter? Well, I think that, I mean, a government white paper is the government's view on a report submitted to it by a panel. Um, I, I think that some of the things that have um, come out, I, I mean, the counsel to the Lagos state government is not quite the same thing as the Lagos state government. And I think we should bear that in mind because the Lagos state government was represented at the panel and it had the opportunity to cross-examine and so on and so forth. Um, I think that we cannot be in a position to know because we did not see a signed report and I think that the uh, members who have commented on it, they may not have, uh, they may have looked at their recommendations, which are probably the recommendations that they intended to make, even if there are some, some, some mistakes there. But I think that the transcription of the evidence is says that. Yeah. Okay, I think we're having some bits of... Uh... For a week and, sorry, hello? No, no, go ahead. I, I... Said that I, was particularly, I said I was particularly surprised that when the chief pathologist gave evidence that the DNA testing of the samples that they had taken had not been done, that his department had been without electricity for a week, and that there was a danger of the um, samples deteriorating, and that they had had 15 people, 15 families who had come forward and said that we think that one of the body, bodies you have may be our relation. I was surprised that it was not made a matter of urgency that the government should, the Lagos State government should release the funding 
for the DNA testing so that there would be some nexus between the bodies that had been that on which autopsies had been done and any of the families that to whom they were being ascribed would, would be would be established because if we are to wait for the there are some things that really one, one shouldn't have to wait for um so, so I, I think that um we we cannot say i think that when the report is done the government always has the right to accept or reject but they can even quarrel with the findings if they like but what the governor had told um the panel was that they would release the report in full and that their white paper then they would also issue their white paper which would be about how would they implement the findings of the of the panel and let's not forget that um those findings include i mean the panel again a bit rushed to judgment by saying before people have been tried by saying that um army officers should be um uh, should be should be dismissed and so on and so forth but you have to remember that under the law evidence that could be produced but is not produced then a court is entitled to infer that or to draw um a conclusion that that evidence if it had been produced would have been unfavorable so the army did itself no favors by refusing to present its officers who had been okay. subpoenaed and who had been served with the subpoenas um it did do itself favors by refusing okay okay uh, no, no, uh, Victor. but also and we yeah yeah Mar we... marista I'll, I'll i'll get back to you i'll get back to you murder uh, is i'll come back to you now uh, victor uh, taking a look at this report that is in the public a lot of nigerians have reacted uh, some nigerians are excited about this report and uh, because of the, they feel that okay it has done measure of justice the compensation and all that uh, 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 there are aspects of this uh, uh, panel, this, this report that, that, that's already in the public that you're excited about and how do you ex uh, what, what do you expect the government to do uh, about uh, getting some of those recommendations uh, laid out by the panel? Okay, first of all, at least we all agree that on that day, they were uh, dead bodies. Okay. We all agree that uh, 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 Armless uh, uh, protesters, they were killed yeah. on that day, at least. Uh, for once, we all have agreed on that, mm -hmm. that actually life were, were taken yes. and all, all of that. So I think with that, that gives us a headway yeah. to now know, okay, who ordered the killings? Yeah. I think that, that one is no longer in doubt, at least from this. Yes, case, from was... this now, we, we have to start investigating who ordered the killings. Yeah. Now, even if there are recommendations that the officers should be fired, don't forget that officers, they are under the law to obey the last command. So there must be somebody behind that order that killing. The officers did not just leave the barracks and go there and start killing without order. Mm. So we need to know who ordered the killing mm. at the Lekki mm. That is That is the main issue. That, that's what we should we should be worried about. It's not about the, the report. The report is just to affirm what we know. We already know that the, a, lot, a lot of persons were killed at, at the toll gate. Nobody is using that as a political weapon. It was, it, it's never a political... See, this case is a murder case, right? So, but at least we all now agree that people were killed. So the question now is, who ordered the killing? Who invited... The, the, okay, some persons might say it's not, it's not a bad thing to invite the security agency to a protest ground, right? But the truth about it, why do they have to come at night? That's the question. They, they were protesting during the day. They have been protesting for 24 hours. The coffee, the coffee, the coffee took effect no, later. Coffee does not hold uh, security. No, it was after the coffee that, okay, officers. to enforce the coffee. That was when they asked them to come. Sir, in. coffee or no coffee, security officers move around. I was 10 minutes away from the protest ground. I was on my way heading towards the protest ground when I started hearing gunshot. On my way coming, there were already security personnel before the protest ground. And you know now, you've been in this country long, long enough to know that even if there is a law that there is no movement, if you are a policeman or an army officer, you can move. So I, I, for me, 
For me, this is what I'm saying. Mother is mother. We need to know who killed the young uh, citizens at the Lekki Toge. That's where we should move on to. Whether it, it's a rumor, whether the, the report the, of the panel is, the, is, the, is not uh, uh, concluded, is not correct or not. That's, that's not the issue. The issue here is that let's handle this case as a murder case. Yeah. Let's not handle it like maybe we're trying to investigate. Now, now, now just before I go, I'll, I'll, I'll go, go back to IOB, just briefly, uh, uh, how do you react to what uh, IOB said, that uh, the, the DNA, uh, the pathologist was supposed to conduct all this DNA, said, look, they didn't have light to conduct DNA, but the panel, um, this leaked report has names of people. So how do you authenticate that these names you have? Because there was no DNA done and all that. Okay, if you follow this case from the very beginning, then the day after the, the saga took place at uh, Lekki Tobit, they were young Nigerians, they were journalists that went to military hospital to check if there are dead bodies in their mortuary. The military did not allow them Access. They said the military did. No, not it's not. Allow. They said they were on live Instagram. Now, they, see, sir. I mean, they, they said my, it. See, my friends were there. They were on live on Instagram. The military personnel did not allow them to pass through the gate. No, that, what, what I'm saying sir, is that the please, DNA will please. have been a platform to. Please. The to, truth about it is that right now, the evidence that we have mm. eh, has been covered. But the truth about it, nobody. Under the surface of this earth, we deny that there were no killings at the Lekki Toge. Mm. Okay, uh, uh, Victor. Do you I'll understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Even I, th if I think it's, it's a common fact. Everyone the, agrees the that was killed. So in let India. us start investigating the murder case. Okay. Who ordered the killings? Who ordered that, the yeah, killings? That, okay. That, that, we'll, 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 come, we'll come to that line of thoughts. And, and I, uh, uh, let me come back to you on this. Now, in the course of your uh, conversation uh, a couple of minutes back, you talked about uh, the report that an, an unsigned uh, uh, document. Now, just make us understand, legally speaking, how. Uh, uh, how do we handle uh, a report that has no signature? If, uh, uh, okay, it was not officially released, but it has uh, raised the confidence of a lot of Nigerians because the, the contents in this uh, leaked report, people felt, believe that, okay, to some extent justice has been done. Uh, but it was not signed. What does it say of this uh, uh, report, legally speaking? I, I think that we tend to, um, to to major in the minor issues. As I said, I don't. It, my expectation is that when the final report as signed is released, it will substantially reflect what is there. But there are errors and mistakes in the one that is out in the public, which um, even if you put a spell checker through, if you put it through a spell checker, you would expect to see um, some 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 corrections. So I think that we shouldn't be hanging on on this the the, the the young man the young politician there is um, correct as i was also saying that murder is a state offense and when you are prosecuting a state offense you have to gather the evidence now evidence is not necessarily going to be what was before the panel because there were a lot of um videos and so on and so forth the people themselves were not there and um, you, if, you are, if you are being tried for murder, certainly you are going to be um, in a position to, to challenge some of the evidence of people who are not before you, who can be cross-examined. Cross but I think that what, what is required is less of the politicization of the matter. The panel has in fact done a job. It listened to evidence. It took both hearsay and it took direct evidence. In some cases, it was satisfied with the um, direct evidence and the hearsay evidence, and in other cases, it was not. What the Lagos state government is required to do is to see how can we, imp that's what they've said they're going to do, how can we implement the recommendations? So if the recommendations are that certain people should be prosecuted, then that is what um, it will have to do. The, um, it, it's a difficult situation because the people who are supposed to produce the evidence, namely the police and in fact the government itself, are amongst those who are on, on, on how do I put it, 
on the hot seat as far as the allegations are gone. But I think it's important that we don't continue to say we already knew and so on. I, I, I must confess that I was one of those who, having learned from friends who live in the area that there had been shooting, and also seeing Amnesty International saying that it had Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, I think we're having some bits of. Uh, I, I, I okay. drew myself. No, I'm sorry. I, I, I drew myself back to the whether, rather than the hysteria, there are certain. We would wait for the panel's report. Now the panel has spoken, and it has reached findings. I think that. While it is possible to impeach some, and I think that some, as I said, some of these things are, are substantive and some of them are not. But I think it's important that we go forward and that the government should be seen, not, not, not just that it should go through the motions, but it should be seen to be explaining what it intends to do with the recommendations and also where it accepts, why it accepts, where it doesn't accept, why it doesn't ex accept. I think it's unfortunate when members of the panel are now being impeached for bias because, quite frankly, I mean, for example, if I take the example of Mr. Adeboluwa, it was not a secret that he had sued the Lagos State government over the Leki Tolki. So I, I, th I think that for us to now come and start saying, oh, well, he was against the Leki Tolki, and therefore, I think it's late. That's, that's an objection that should have been made by the Lagos State government, which appointed him to the panel, <laughs> that's, that's an objection that should have been made from the from the from, from the get-go because it wasn't it was not in any way a secret. So I think that on the whole, and I know that you have other people that want to speak, we need to take the heat out of this. We need to take the politics out of this. At the end of the day, there were 99 bodies deposited deposited in various places that autopsies were done on. The panel thinks that there were other bodies. Well, that is speculation. But of the ones that were deposited, DNA testing needs to be done to see who they were. There needs to be, and, and even when they talk about cleaning up the scene of the crime, we've all seen those places where they go with the luminol and find blood after several years that blood had been cleaned up. So I think that we should be much more forensic in our approach and we should take some of the heat and emotion out of it because otherwise you're always going to have a situation where people can retreat into that very comfortable space where we all get to select the facts that we like and to discard the ones that we don't and i don't think that that helps either the cause of justice or indeed the cause of um, building up the trust that the panel said was an important factor that needed to be restored between the government and the people, particularly among the young people. Okay, Bar Barista, just before I let you go, I just want to uh, raise uh, this uh, question. Uh, uh, you've talked, you've uh, uh, educated us on uh, this report, the various uh, uh, holes that, uh, uh, that are in this report. But you also made a very important point that I want to dwell on, this aspect of the DNA. Now, I want to believe that despite that uh, the panel submitted the report, uh, there are still room for uh, this uh, conclusive aspect of DNA because I think the government still owe Nigerians uh, that responsibility to really know uh, the identity of those who have not been uh, claimed, those who have not been fully identified so that at the end of the day, it's not just uh, uh, like uh, nobody knows them. And I think uh, it, uh, there are rooms, windows that we can still go back and affect the issue of the DNA despite that there's a final uh, report from the panel. Yeah. What, what the um, chief pathologist um, said was that samples had been taken from all the bodies, but th that they had not been able to do the DNA testing because funds had not been released. And the panel pointed out that in the case of the, um, the, the synagogue building collapse, the case of the Dana air crash, that funds were released for DNA testing. And therefore, that um, uh, there, there was no it was not easy to understand why that had not been done. And also, the chief pathologist said that because of the electricity supply situation to his department, 
that there was a danger that those samples might deteriorate. Didn't say that they would, but there was a danger that they might that they might. So that that department clearly needs to be funded and um, uh, equipped properly. I mean, Lagos State is is groundbreaking in having a coroner's law, which it is making use of. Um, deaths in custody, sudden and unexplained deaths, deaths at the hands of security agencies and so on. The coroner's law is there for that. But if you're going to have a coroner and the coroner is going to have a chief pathologist, then you have to give them the tools with which to do the job. And in this case, I think it's important. It, it, it's not that there were not bodies. I mean, the fact is that there were 99 bodies, one of which was a, a, a young woman. So, and, and five of which were said to be police officers who had been attacked and, and, and so on. So it's not that there were not dead bodies, but to the extent that we are saying that these family members will now come and say, well, I saw my brother, my nephew, my son go off to um, uh, join the um, uh, protest and I didn't see him. This is my DNA, which I want you to test against the, what, the bodies that you have so that I can identify the corpse of my missing relation. I think that those things need to be done w in, in any circumstances, um, whether there is crisis, whether there is mass casualty or not. And in this case, I think that um, the, the government needs to put that, um, put, put that money up. Thank you so much, uh, Barista Ayo Ube, for sharing your thoughts with us on, on News Hub today. I think one thing we can definitely take home is there is still a, a room for the DNA testing to be concluded. And thank you so much for being on News Hub today. Thank you for inviting me. Now, now uh, well, I understand that in Nibehe, uh, Barista in Nibehe is online and uh, Nice to have you join us this morning. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll introduce him better when we come back from this break. Please to stay with us. What could be better this December than being part of the biggest 